minimally invasive therapies or MIS are very popular again. There was a period of time of increased popularity. That popularity dropped precipitously and now there's a resurgence. That's kind of the background. Um, why did they f why did they lose popularity and why are they having it now? It might be a, a good starting point. They lost popularity in the past because primarily durability. They, there was a high percentage of patients which asked for retreatment, um, sometimes in a sh very short period of time. Um, there were some studies that showed more durability, but all reports, or nearly uniformly, those reports showed that the impact on the symptoms was not substantial. And many of these men ended up going back on medication or on to a more formal surgical approach. As we turn the clock forward, new technologies have been introduced. And so urologists have taken um, a, a cautious uh, step back as these began to introduce and say, is just, is, are these things just another prostatic gizmo uh, of which I just, I could give you a list of probably in the mid 20s, um, a huge number of devices that came on board and then left because they didn't work or they didn't work for very long. So there's a little bit of conservative approach to it. I'd say many urologists feel that Im important criteria, not, um, not comprehensive, but important criteria to evaluate are number one, is the technology impactful on three or four things that patients care about? Is it improving their symptoms? Are the patient reported outcomes impactful? Do they change it substantially? Second is, as urologists, are we uh, improving flow rate, something which we look at as impacting prostatic obstruction, kind of a, a more objective measure of impact. And then the third is um, the um, impact on important aspects like sexual function. Are they impacting erection? Are they impacting ejaculation? Um, other important aspects um, is uh, generalizability. If you do it in a trial, it works at a certain level, and as you transition from clinical research into general practice, is, is that translate in a um, parallel fashion? Is it equal, is it generalizable? Or is it only in a study uh, patient cohort? Um, I mentioned before durability. In my own view, this is one that um, we need to answer, answer uniformly across the field. Um, are patients being impacted uh, successfully? And then over time, is there any erosion in that durability? And are we judging durability uniformly? Um, unfortunately, we do not have a internet, we're working towards an internationally accepted definition of durability. Right now it's not there, so in some ways it's technology defined. Most urologists would say um, not only does it need to help symptoms and not at the cost of an impact on sexual function, um, but can it be done in the office? in an office setting that's usually a good cost savings for our, um, our health system, um, be done in the office, and can it be done with a minimum amount of catheter, uh, fully catheter drainage, or no catheter drainage at all? We have technologies which can be hugely impactful on lower urinary tract symptoms, um, the standard TURP or laser therapies, we have these already. Um, those require um, nearly uniformly longer term catheter use afterwards. And patients perceive that as a big negative. If mists are going to make a, a big difference, then um, part of that acceptance to patients is minimize the impact on my getting back to life. So that uh, catheter time really reflects how soon can I get back to work? How soon can I re, uh, re, resume my hobbies, my physical activity, my golf? How s 
you know, how soon can I get back on that, uh, back in that part of my life? How soon can I resume sexual activities? So uh, those are kind of the, I'd say, major hallmarks in terms of acceptability or adoptability of missed therapies. In my own view, the, um, the, player, the various players don't meet all of them. Um, they all have some, um, some aspects where there's work to be done. Maybe their technologies could be done on a different, a slightly modified cohort, a different kind of patient, or maybe the technologies to be done in a slightly different way to minimize things like catheter time or impact on sexual function. So no, unfortunately none of them are actually there yet, although we're certainly better now than we were 10 years ago.